Well, what's up guys and welcome back to Project Time Garage. Today, we're back on the Project F2 Hoopty. Bet you guys thought we forgot about the F2 Hoopty, didn't you? Well, we haven't. It's got a lot of stuff that still needs to be done to it. If you don't know anything about Project F2 Hoopty, I'm gonna stick a link right up here so you guys can uh, you know, come and learn about the truck. Long story short, this is a 99 Ford F250, 7.3 power stroke, automatic four wheel drive that my buddy got for $500. Yep. Then sold it to my other buddy for like $1,200. And since then, we've worked on it just about nonstop. Um, lots been done to it. He's been driving the wheels off the truck. Been really reliable so far. So, uh, but there's a bunch of other stuff that we want to do to it. It doesn't have any real problems, but he's wanting to pay attention to all the things that it probably needs. Truck's got 350 something thousand miles on it or something like that. So, it's, it's due a lot of stuff. What we're gonna do in this video, and this may be a video series, I don't know, it just depends on how long it runs. I don't wanna put a huge long video out because nobody watches them. We're gonna do the turbo from KC Turbos. We're gonna do up pipes. We're gonna do plenums. We're gonna do new boots. We're gonna do, did I say up pipes already? Because we're doing those. Oh, and we're also gonna pull the uh, fuel ball out and do a reseal on that too while we're in it. And we're gonna do an exhaust from BRP. So whole lot of stuff uh, going on here, whole lot of stuff that's gonna be done. So pretty much everything down in the valley of the engine, all the way back, we're gonna do all that stuff and then into the exhaust and do all that stuff. Uh, anyway, we're gonna get the truck backed in here, get it on the, uh, on the lift and go to work on it. So let's get to it. I know that looks kind of funny, the way we've got that done, See, back to the rear end up on the lift and lift up the rear end and it makes the front end go down and kind of brings the back to you. Couple that with a top side creeper and it makes it a whole lot easier to work on them like this. All these trucks are so tall and they got so much stuff here um, in the front that it's just, it's a pain to get back there in the very back and do what we got to do because, I mean, turbo's coming out of the thing and that's kind of a pain. It's heavy and it's way back under there and it's, well, you know. So anyway, at least he doesn't have a big old brush card on it like my last two diesel or the last two diesels we worked on. So anyway, uh, let me show you what we're gonna be putting on the thing. The major parts here are the, the turbo. This is a uh, stock plus unit from KC Turbos. Got all the new boots from Riff Raff. Set of plenums from Irate. And um, set of up pipes and bellows the whole kit there. I don't even know who that's from, uh, from Full Force actually. Important I mention, none of this is sponsored. All this stuff was bought straight up with his money, not mine. I guess the thing to do probably next is let's, uh, well, we already got the hood open, so that's a good first step. So I guess we'll start pulling up pipe or uh, uh, charge air pipes and batteries. That's usually the first step in these things, get some room to work. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get this uh, air intake and uh, an air filter out of our way. Uh, it's just got a uh, clamp up on that side that's uh, eight millimeter. All right, so with this out of the way, we're going to do, uh, we're going to go ahead and get this uh, charge air pipe. Always take it off at the spider end. Don't take it off of the metal tube because you run a risk of crushing that, uh, that aluminum when you put it back. The other uh, end of that charge air pipe where it goes into the intercooler is right down there. It'll be another 7 16 on a band clamp. Am I taking the back one off? Uh, yeah, take it off closer to, take it off on the intercooler side. At that point, you can grab this right here and just pull it straight out. And that charge air pipe, once you get it loose from up here, you can just pull it straight out and it'll just kind of work its way right up, snake right out of there. Also, can we take a second and admire that redhead steering gearbox down there? If you have one of these trucks that drives like crap, get you a redhead steering gearbox. 
I've got them on most everything I own now. Cleans up the driving 1,003%, maybe 1,004. While you got your ratchet out, go ahead and get this, uh, this charge air pipe too. This one's a little easier. It's a little higher up. It's right there for the, for the band clamp. And then uh, for, of course, for the top one, it's up there. Comes out pretty much the same way, but you'll probably have to, uh, probably have to unhook your map sensor here. I usually just go ahead and take, uh, take these off and just lay this whole bracket out of the way. There it goes. Yeah, it's always a good practice to put bolts and nuts back where they came from. When it comes time to reassemble, it's a little easier. Of course, I think if you do these a lot, you just kind of know where everything goes. I've already gotten dirty. I, I, I demand a raise. I demand a raise. Me too. Like butter. So pretty much anytime you see a wire and a sensor, just unplug it, get it out of the way. We'll get our grid heater off, or our air intake heater. If you're doing this at home, there's a couple of little ceramic spacers there. Pay attention to how it comes apart because it'll need to go back together the same way those little insulators. Yeah, the nut's capped if it stays on. All right, once all that stuff is, uh, all the electronics or electrical parts are unhooked, we'll go ahead and finish getting this, uh, this air intake tube that goes uh, over to the turbo inlet side. We'll get that took loose. There's pretty much just uh, two eight millimeter uh, bolts on the back side of that, that uh, housing there. And then the last thing you got is the boot where it goes onto the turbo. Should be an eight millimeter band clamp. Once that's loose, you should be able just to rock that whole thing off there. Probably the thing to do on that on that uh, wastegate hose is just pull it loose from the clamp or from the the uh, vacuum canister back there. It just pushes on, and that whole thing can come out as a big assembly. For our next trick, we're going to go ahead and pull the spider off. Uh, for the spider, really all you've got is a um, a band clamp there on the top, and. Um, Basically, the, the, the boots down there have band clamps on them. That's really all that holds the spider in place. The band clamps or the uh, hose clamps are right there. I'll try to illustrate that for you with an arrow. Should be able to get that, uh, that V band clamp loose just by maybe doing some tapping on it. There it went. All right. Probably have to do the other side too, because it's only half of it's off. But those things just kind of get seated in there over time. There we go. Just when you're tapping on those, be really careful and don't don't mar them and don't deform them. Uh, otherwise, they may not seal or they may not uh, pull it back together very well. So you'll have to get that clamp out of the way and you have to move it completely off of its uh, little perch there. Looks like it's still bottom holding side. on the bottom, yeah. isn't it? There we go. Now, let me show you about this thing. Basically, it's in it's in three pieces here, and those three pieces like to get uh, kind of stuck. So it sometimes helps if you can just tap them loose. That's what that looks like. At that point, you should be able to just lift your plenum right out, or your uh, spider, as they call it, right out. There we go. An engine valley. Yes, we should be able to go ahead and pull our uh, our old boots out of there. Get rid of them. This is the point in time where you want to start being careful and not put anything in the, uh, not drop anything down in the holes. We've opted to go ahead and pull the turbo next, just because it's there and it's really the the toughest part of the job as far as getting to stuff. Honestly, there's not a whole lot that holds it on. You see a bolt facing me right there. It goes straight down. I'll put an arrow where it's at. It's a big long one. Same thing on the back side. So those two bolts. And then as far as clamps go, there's one big V-band clamp over here for the downpipe. And on the very back side, there is one more V-band clamp 
back there that goes into that collector for the, uh, the up pipes and bellows. Really, two bolts, two clamps, and that's it. Sounds easy. It's not that easy. We're gonna go ahead and pull the band clamps off first, and he's gonna, looks like he's gonna elect to start with the hardest one, which is the one in the very far back. The band clamp he's looking at getting is way back there. Oh, there it is, right there. I'm gonna go ahead and get this band clamp off as well. Isn't that not all the way to the end? Yeah. Yeah, yeah finish taking that sucker off. Oh, it's loose. You feel how you just pulled it? You're loose. Yeah, that's it. At this point, it needs the same treatment as the other one. It's just stuck. So take your screwdriver and just kind of pry. Well, the other nut's almost off. That's okay. First, go ahead and do this one so you can see what it looks like. Oh, this one right here? Yep. Just keep going with this one right here. So just take that and just kind of try to pry it loose like you did that top band clamp. Oh, just pry it now? Yeah, just kind of pry and work on it. It should pop loose. Top of these band clamps loses a little bit of a pain. There it is. Now we just have one more, and of course it's going to be as far back as you can possibly see, or not see. Let's see here. Why would they do something like this? Because they hate their technicians. We decided to go ahead and pull the uh, pull the two bolts out of the turbo itself, because we're having a tough time getting uh, getting that uh, back band V band clamp loose. They get really sticky, Ugh. so got to get kind of maybe, maybe we can take the turbo and shake it a little bit, try to break it loose a little easier. There's no room to work. Oh. be that. You should be able to rock it if you're going to be able to rock it. It does a little bit, but not much. You have to, you can probably lift up some with a pry bar, reach under there and just kind of lift up a little bit with it. Under something. There we go. It's coming up off the pedestal now. Oh, that O-ring right there is completely in half. You can see right there where that, that, uh, that pipe joins uh, that collector there. See all the black soot? Well, that's been exhaust leak, and that exhaust leak, you know, it doesn't feed the turbo as well, so your turbo doesn't spool up as well. You don't get as much boost. So um, every time I've ever done this, these things nearly just fell apart in my hands. So good thing we're doing up pipes too. Next thing's coming off is the turbo pedestal. We're gonna get some seals replaced under that, or O-rings. Acorns in there. Mm -hmm. So our valley's getting uh, a little bit cleaner. A little bit, well, not cleaner, but <laughs> less crap in the way. All right. Let's take these up pipes off the easy way. See that one right there just fell out of that end. Wasn't even in there anymore at all. That oh, yeah. was where all the leak was. Every one of them I've ever pulled out was that way or worse. Well, he's under there right now, Dremel cutting off all the uh, all the bolts that uh, that hold these uh, these up pipes or uh, up pipes on it. They're in a real bad position to get to, and uh, it turns out with a Dremel you can just cut the bolts because the new bellow kit comes with uh, e bolts, new hardware, and all that. So, um, pretty much we're not filming taking that off because it's just. Well, there's just really nowhere to film it honestly it's just really tough plus we're working on the ground because um you know we started with the truck half off the lift and can't start it to move it back on there so um that's what we're doing 
Um, as far as these things go, it's pretty simple. They just um, they just attach to the uh, to the back side of the exhaust manifold, and they just run up to that uh, that collector we were looking at earlier. Um, I'll show you that when we get uh, when we get both these pipes attached to the back side of the manifolds and stuck up through there. I'm gonna go ahead and, and get ready to pull this fuel bowl. To do that, I'm gonna make just a little bit more room here, um, getting these solenoids out of the way. This is not necessary to pull the fuel bowl, but it sure makes it a lot easier to get down here and get these lines loose. It just gives you a little bit more room, is all. Plus we're pulling plenums off, so room's much appreciated. And now we can see those uh, those lines pretty well right there. Like I said, we've got a new reseal kit for this uh, for this fuel bowl, so we'll pull it off, put it on the bench, and um, go completely through it. All right, that's that. Now, uh, the only thing that holds that fuel bowl in is there's two bolts. There's one right there and one right down there. And our fuel bowl should be in our hands. Sucker is right behind that, that pipe, that water pipe. This is the exhaust back pressure sensor that we're right up against here. And we are right up against it too. I mean, right up against it. It's just gonna be gooey to the end. It sucks, the wrench doesn't wanna go on, but it doesn't wanna come off either. That's it. That's it. There is one other line here in there that I neglected to get <clears throat> that I couldn't see. All the way down under here back in there. There we go. We got the connector back here for the water and fuel. We got the hose back here for the drain. There, that's the fuel bowl. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull, uh, we're gonna pull the elect electrical connectors off this. And basically we're just trying to clean up the, the valley a little bit, make it a little bit easier for us to work. Do there. If we can touch it. There's that. And what else will we unplug here? Probably may as well just go ahead and unplug the alternator. There we go. There, that cleans up the, the valley a good bit. Now what you want to do? Lemons. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get this bracket out of the way, which is the bracket that the uh, the uh, glow plug and the heater solenoids attach to. Now we're starting to be able to see our plums. Life's getting good. Suddenly, we should be able to sneak the new plenums by these lines and stuff, I would imagine. Um, thanks. Yeah, like I said, I don't know. Oh, there's another bolt right there. Where'd that one come from? It's been there a long time. Look at that. Oh, that's part of an old solenoid. Part of what? One of the old solenoids. Oh. Ended, burned off. All right, well, I guess the next thing you do is start pulling plenums, like you said. All 
All right, that should be all the uh, all the bolts off that plenum. Now they're going to be glued down pretty good with uh, that gray glue goo. So I guess the thing to do is, I wonder if we should clean this up some before we get too crazy. All right, all we got to do now is take a putty knife and break the goo, get under there and peel it off. All right, nice and clean in there. We're gonna get, uh, I'll get a cut brush or wire brush and we'll clean up that, uh, all that glue on there and be ready to lay on one of the new, one of the new plenums. All right, new plenum going back on. Where's the bolt hole? <laughs> That's one put them on. We're gonna go back here, get the torque wrench out, make sure these are the proper torque, whatever factory spec is. That's what we're gonna make them. On these plenums, um, if you look way back here in the front, there is one bolt that is still in place. It's right behind this uh, high pressure oil reservoir and it doesn't come out as long as this reservoir is in place. Luckily though, the plenums have a notch back here so you can just loosen that bolt as far as it'll go and you can stuff that plenum on it. Also the factory plenums have a notch in them as well so you can just loosen that bolt and just pull them out, you know, work it out. So there's that. All right, let's put this other plenum back on it. So for these, we have these little, uh, uh, these little um, metal crush washer things. They're gonna go on there. And then, and then this guy. Well, I think we've reached a stopping point here, um, at least for today and probably for this video too. Our new plenums are on it. We've got the collector uh, bolted firmly to the up pipes and the valley, it's got a little bit more clean out needs to be done, but that's pretty much all of that. So I think that's a good place to stop for today. So on the next video, uh, we'll go ahead and cover putting the turbo back on it getting the pedestal seal back up, finish cleaning up that valley, um, we'll re uh, reseal the fuel bowl, get that took care of, and we are, we're gonna put a oil, uh, high pressure oil crossover line on it too while we're at it. So that'll take care of, you know, that'll take care of most all that. We'll go ahead and hang the down pipe for the new exhaust system and get it started, and, you know, make sure it all works and, and move around on the next video too. So anyway, Guys, as usual, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'm excited to be back working on Project F2 Hoopty here again. Hope you guys enjoy the video as much as I enjoyed making it. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends about us. Guys, I'll see you next time.